Hello everyone. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our session about how to use LinkedIn to grow your business. To have a smooth experience, it is recommended to exit all background applications and other inactive web apps to avoid your internet bandwidth from overloading. We are going to start shortly as scheduled. Please stay tuned. Uh, good morning, everyone. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to our session about how to use LinkedIn to grow your business. To have a smooth experience, it is recommended to exit all background applications and other inactive web apps to avoid your internet bandwidth from overloading. We are going to start shortly as scheduled. Please stay tuned.
Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Muhammad Dahi, and I'm your host for this session. Welcome to our session today about how to use LinkedIn to grow your business. This session is jointly brought to you by Abu Dhabi Islamic Bank, business banking team, and Square Motion Agency. Please engage with us with your questions using the Q&A section, and we are going to answer your questions after the presentation. The purpose of this webinar is to have an interactive session aiming to provide you with useful tips and strategies on how to use LinkedIn for business growth, especially during these challenging times. After COVID-19, we started to witness new realities that are challenging us to find alternative solutions and to reinvent ourselves. That's why we recently launched our new marketing campaign to the UEE SME customers to be able to say, less running around, more time to focus on my business. This is possible now with added business, helping SME customers to benefit from the expertise of the relationship managers and state-of-the-art digital business banking services on Adib Direct, our online banking platform, in addition to the e-commerce and POS solutions. For more details, please feel free to visit our website, adib.ee slash business, or call us on the business banking dedicated contact center number, 02657-8777. I would like now to introduce our speaker for today, Mr. Vitek Ladislav, who will explain how to use LinkedIn for business growth. Vitek is a LinkedIn smart coach, helping business owners and entrepreneurs to use LinkedIn for business growth. Vitek, over to you. Thank you very much uh, for for the kind introduction. Uh, thank you very much for um, you for the, all all the attendees uh, coming in in such a such a great numbers, and I really uh, love to see you all here. And um, yes, yeah, so as Mohammed, as you, you mentioned, today we're going to talk about LinkedIn and how to um, how to grow your business with LinkedIn. So, without further ado, let me just uh, jump right in, right into it. Um, as Mohammed mentioned, my name is uh, my name is Vitek, and uh, I am I'm the uh, owner of, of video marketing agency, which calls Square Motion. And uh, today I'll be talking about about LinkedIn and how actually LinkedIn can help you grow your business. Um, why we are talking about LinkedIn? LinkedIn is really absolutely fantastic platform uh, for our our businesses. Um, LinkedIn is a platform where you can go in order to make a meaningful business connections, as I as I always say. And before we uh, go into nitty gritty of stuff, I would like to first give you some kind of overview why I believe that LinkedIn is really something you, as a business owner, you should really really pay attention. There are some there are some numbers which are pretty actually impressive. I would say, well, in the LinkedIn we have approximately seven hundred million registered users. What is really interesting, and if you look at the map, obviously there's a you know great number in uh, in the United States, but actually in UAE we have more than four million registered users. So if you think if um, you know uh, counting it per capita, you know four more than four million four million users in UAE. That's really that's really great number. So as you can see, there's a lot of lot of interest in LinkedIn among the business business owners here in UAE. What people are doing on the LinkedIn or how much time they are spending on LinkedIn is also growing. So as you can see now, more than 33% of people they are spending actually more than five hours or five and more hours on the LinkedIn on a weekly basis. Well, I think that's a pretty interesting, interesting number. So you can see that people are actually going to LinkedIn. They want to spend some time on LinkedIn. And um, um, we run some, some other research. We were trying to figure out what they are actually doing on LinkedIn, what kind of, what kind of activities they do on LinkedIn. 
And uh, as you can see, majority of uh, a lot of people, they still are there on the LinkedIn more for the receiving on the receiving end. They are actually receiving information rather than giving some some information. So for us as a business owners, that makes a lot of sense that there is a big window of opportunity. Because if we're going to start uh, putting out content out there and we are going to be more visible, then we can step into that big window of opportunity which LinkedIn is presenting us with. So I think this, this is really, really very interesting. And obviously, uh, the last statistics is very, very clear. LinkedIn is really the best social network for lead generation by far, you know, more than Twitter and Facebook combined. So really pay attention to LinkedIn and figure out how you can use LinkedIn for your business. And we're going to talk about it today. Um, before we get into that, uh, I would like to say that um, we kind of like recognize four type of personalities of link on LinkedIn. Um, first, uh, people are sort of traders. So I think you, uh, we, we, all of us, we could, uh, we could manage to actually uh, to see that those kind, those kind of people. They actually they connect with you, and the first thing what they do is they actually send you some um, some um, you know the the company profile or um, whatever it is um, some uh, some kind of uh, some kind of um, uh, sales pitch, right? So I think that's really that's really important to to understand that we don't want to be we don't want to be that kind of that kind of people. Uh, so so first thing is we don't want to be traders. Uh, on the other hand, we don't want to be spooks either. Uh, therefore, we don't want to be people who connect with you. And the first thing what they do, they just disappear, and you will never see them again. Um, so that's uh, that's uh, that those kind of like a ghost of the of the LinkedIn. We don't want to be those. Yeah. Dynamos are another type of people which um, they actually they're spinning the wheels, they're doing a lot of activities, they're doing a lot of things, but actually they're not really don't not giving getting any results. Yeah. Um, what what we want to be, we want to be LinkedIn smart people who are strategic, people who are um, you know uh, bringing results from LinkedIn, and therefore you are here today. I guess um, you want to really know how to really drive results uh, from LinkedIn. So there are a few things which you need to do in order to be successful on LinkedIn. And we're going to start with number one, which is LinkedIn profile. You have to have really absolutely pristine and fantastic LinkedIn profile because um, just imagine whenever you, you want to enter in a business relationship with somebody else, probably you go to LinkedIn and check the LinkedIn profile of that particular person, right? So exactly this is happening from the other side. So if somebody wants to do a business with you, Probably they will go to your LinkedIn profile and they will check out, you know, what is on your LinkedIn profile. So that's why that's it. That's that's the first kind of like a, a building block of any activities on the LinkedIn. You really need to have absolutely fantastic LinkedIn profile. Number two is uh, you need to engage, start engaging with, with the right type of audience. So you need to figure out who is your target audience and start engaging with, uh, with those kind of, with those kind of people. So that's number two, engagement. Before engagement, um, sorry, sorry, first comes engagement, then comes connections. Because if you do the connection right, then, um, you can connect with people with, you know, absolute, um, certainty or, or more than certainty actually you know so people will connect with you much easily because they will know you because you already engage with them so number three is about connection how to connect on uh, on linkedin number four it's all about posting and um, those are the interesting questions you know when to post how to post why to post and we will address those as well and the fifth step on uh, on uh, linkedin is conversion how to actually convert all the people all the activities and how to bring results for our business so these are the five key elements key things which you need to always keep in mind when you do things on linkedin and we're going to talk about them one by one so let's start with uh, first impression on linkedin and that's linkedin profile with the linkedin profile when you land on the linkedin profile what do you see first probably it's the profile headshot that's the photo right which which you have there and imagine profiles with the professional headshot they receive a lot of attraction yeah as you can see here 14 times more views nine times more connection requests and 36 times more messages so to have a proper photo on your profile is extremely important yeah if you have any photo from the party from the wedding from your adventures or some dark photo please 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 change it 
keep them for keep these photos for your Facebook um, or Instagram or TikTok. That's fine. That's okay. But on a professional platform, as um, as there is in um, um, on the, on the LinkedIn, please keep professionally done photos. So invest these 200 or 300 dirhams in a professional photo shoot and make sure that your profile photo really is absolutely fantastic, inviting. And I will tell you what, what I mean by that. Something like this. These are the examples of really good, good looking, uh, professionally done photos. And they have certain specifics. They are always passport format. So as you can see, for example, here in my thumbnail, right, in, in the bottom right corner, so there's a, it's a chest shot, passport format. You dress appropriately, of course, you can groom as well. Um, you have usually behind yourself some, some light color background or white background. I prefer white background. You look in the camera and you give big, bright smile. So as you can see here, for example, um, the, my, my dear friend, Yvonne Spiller, on her profile, her photo is very, very inviting. Exactly what I see. Wide background, big bright smile, chest shot, fantastic, fantastic shot. So something like this, please make sure that you have that kind of photo on your LinkedIn profile. It is really, really important. Yeah. If you don't believe me, you can believe machines because now machines, they, they have a lot of learnings, right? Like machine learning and all that stuff. Actually, there is a, we a very interesting website where you can go to, snapper.co. It's a free, uh, free um, artificial intelligence analysis of your LinkedIn profile photo. So you can actually log in with your LinkedIn profile into snapper.co and uh, Snapper will analyze your uh, LinkedIn profile photo. Very, very interesting. Check it out. Definitely, definitely worth uh, checking in. So we are talking about first impression on LinkedIn, right? So we were talking about photo. Now let's talk about LinkedIn headline. LinkedIn headline is one of the most visible parts of your LinkedIn profile. And also it's actually one of the major factor in LinkedIn search algorithm. So it is again, very, very important. What is actually LinkedIn headline? So, and what I'm talking about is those few lines directly below your name. So that's the LinkedIn headline. What does it say about you? What does it say about your business? Does it talk directly to your clients or is it just all about some, some, um, uh, all about you? Yeah. So we actually recognize four different type of headlines. Number one is the expert headline. Number two, we talk about mission headline. Third one is an entertaining headline. And fourth is customer facing headline. And again, I will give you a few examples of each of those so you will understand what I'm talking about. So let's talk about expert headline. Expert headline is a headline where expertise of that particular person is above his personal brand. So imagine it's a scientist, maybe governmental officials, maybe uh, an influencers or someone, someone like that who his expertise is, is really the driving force, driving factor behind the visibility of his, of his profile. So if you're somebody like that, yeah, feel free. And maybe you can, you can um, figure out some expert, expert headline. Yeah. Then there is a mission headline. Again, mission headline is for someone whose mission is much higher than his personal brand. So again, the mission is the driving factor uh, why people visiting him. So I, I took a liberty and actually uh, citing here um, one, one mission headline from, uh, from uh, His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. Um, so so that's, that's, um, that's a, you know, um, the, the mission headline where the mission is really the, the driving driving force behind all these activities. Yeah? Then we have an entertaining headline and we have, um, you know, a lot of, lot of um, you know, interesting, <laughs> interesting headlines out there. Again, if we are here as a business owners, I wouldn't really recommend to use any of any of these like Jack of all trades, master of none. I, I'm really sure if I would like to connect with, with that kind of person on LinkedIn. But anyway, feel free if, if you feel that, uh, that you want to be like that. But as a business owner, I always recommend to all our clients, if you're a business owner, please try to look into customer facing headline. And I will tell you again, why is it so important? Because, because it, um, with the headline, you're talking directly to your clients. You're talking directly to your customers. So, uh, uh, the, um, you know, that you can, you can actually use this template, which, which I put out there, helping, enabling or empowering target audience. So who is your target audience to do what? Yeah. So you can actually use this and you can, um, you know, insert your target audience into the bracket or, and what you do uh, into, into the other part. And again, just let me give you a few examples. 
empowering corporate professionals to wake up happy on Mondays, career happiness coach. Imagine if this person would have on, on his profile or her profile only, you know, name and career happiness coach. Yeah, I mean, it's not bad, right? Like a, you, she's, she's telling us probably what she does. It's fine. But it's not really very relevant to us. But suddenly, if, we, if, uh, if she adds empowering corporate professionals to wake up happy on Mondays, she's talking directly to corporate professionals. So if I'm corporate professional and I'm not really happy, you know, on Monday morning, I would think, well, I should really contact her, right? So you see how targeted suddenly the headline is, yeah? So I think, I think make sure that you really think about it. You know, are, are we talking through the headline to our clients and customers? Another example, I helped seven SAS businesses to reach $10 million revenue. Who wants to be number eight? How targeted this headline is? If you would, again, just imagine there's a, uh, you know, maybe maybe he would, he would say like, a, I'm, I'm helping uh, SAS businesses. That's it. Um, if that would be the, the headline, you know, it's not really that, that targeted, right? But suddenly, if, um, if he's adding this seven SAS businesses to reach $10 million revenue, who, who wants to be number eight? I want to be number eight if I'm actually in in this in the position of SAS business. Yeah. So I hope you can you can feel that that you know that suddenly even through the headline I'm talking directly um, to my clients to my to my audience. I, I'm relevant to them. I help business businesses turn clicks into customers. CEO of Spark Creative Digital Marketing Agency. Again, very very targeted targeted. Um, headline, I would actually just uh, change the businesses here into a little bit more specific niche, uh, some group of, um, of businesses, maybe it's uh, in logistics, maybe in, you know, I don't know what, what, what is, uh, you know, type of business businesses he or she helps with, but, um, you know, kind of like have it a little bit more niche down well, on this one, but otherwise it's very, very interesting headline. So think about how can you how can you actually change this headline um, in uh, what you have there now and how can you change it in order to talk directly to your clients and customers? And there are some mistakes which people are making and uh, I just outlined them for you here. Of course, all the cliche words which we know like uh, hardworking and passionate and all these kind of things, please don't use them. Um, really, they are, they, are not, they are not nice and they are not necessary actually. Yeah. Also, do not use any industry jargon. Uh, again, it's uh, just nobody understands that. Uh, and don't don't use any three-letter abbreviations. As you can see in that example below, I don't really know what this person does. I mean, IoT, I can think of like, maybe Internet of Things, but the rest of it, I can't really figure out what this person does. And if I'm confused and I don't know why uh, or what this person does, probably I'm not going to uh, really... Uh, connect connect with him or with her yeah so ju just mind mind you about about this so we still still talking about about linkedin profile about the first impression we were talking about the photo we were talking about the headline and now let's talk about linkedin banner linkedin banner is that big huge space you know above your uh, your photo it's a premium space but you know, so many people actually just leaving it empty. Then you're not using it for the uh, for the brand. And I'm really wondering always about this. You know why? You know why you're leaving it leaving it empty? You know, it's. Um, I, I always give this this example. Imagine that you have an access to to a billboard on a Sheikh Zayed road. Yeah, and and you're not using it for your brand. You wouldn't do it, right? Like it's not smart. Like a, you have an access to it, you can use it. So why wouldn't you use it? So I think I think it's really really um, uh, important to actually uh, look into uh, you know using this this big huge space which LinkedIn is giving to us to our disposal for our brand. Don't use it empty like like here. As you can see, this is a typical example of the the empty uh, empty LinkedIn banner. Uh, these are these examples of, of, a, of a, a nicely looking corporate banners, which I would highly recommend you to look into. So as you can see, for example, Rachel down there, she is a book author. So she's highlighting the book. So she's presenting herself as a book author uh, and, uh, and showing the book uh, to the world. Yeah, uh, Anthony, he's a LinkedIn uh, voice of Australia. So again, he's highlighting that expertise, that kind of, um, that kind of thing in his, in his uh, banner. Yeah. So those are really nicely looking, corporate looking banners, which you can actually upload to your profile too. Yeah. And if you don't know how to do that, go to canva.com. If you don't know Canva, now you know. 
Canva is absolutely fantastic free graphic design platform where you can find many, many things and you can find LinkedIn banner templates too. So if you go there, if you want to go there and then you, you will check out LinkedIn banner templates, you can choose some, some of the nice visuals. You can just place your logo uh, to the banner and you can upload the LinkedIn banner. Easy peasy. You have, uh, there's no, no excuse. Really, Canva is absolutely fantastic. Definitely check it out. So we're still talking about, about the, the LinkedIn profile and uh, I'm not going to go through all LinkedIn profile because obviously there are more, more sections and we don't have that much time uh, to go all throughout um, the profile. But one of the thing is uh, LinkedIn about, yeah? And LinkedIn about uh, is uh, maybe many times used as a CV. You know, we're putting the CV there because LinkedIn before was used mainly for the recruiters and job uh, sir, you know, job seeking people. Um, now it's not that anymore. So I would like to say that summary or the about section is not your CV. It is actually your story. So please try to think about it and put um, in that about section your story. How the story should be written, it should be always written in a first person. Here, you can also directly address your customer. So you can, you can start talking to, to your customer, be customer centric. Do not use any jargon, but actually use some keywords, um, your industry specific keywords, because LinkedIn algorithm is looking through the, the about section as well. You can break the text into certain paragraphs. So overall, it will actually look, look really nice and, and spacious and, you know, and uh, easy to read. You can, add, you can add some icons and graphic elements and um, actually make it easy for people. If you're, if you're a business owner, make it easy for your clients to, to reach out to you. So you can add some website, your, your phone number, your email address, you know, just making it easy for them, for the other, other people to actually uh, get in touch with you. So I think that's, that's, uh, that's really, really important. This is one of the, one of the, the about, uh, it's just an example of them, which I really like. It's a, uh, again, friend of mine. And as you can see here, actually nicely, nicely organized and in the different paragraphs. He has some bullet points there. And at the end, his name, his email address, his uh, phone number, all that. So very, very easy to, to actually uh, reach out to him. Yeah. So please think about when you, when you're writing this about section, uh, make sure that you organize it in, in this way. So that's the that's the uh, um, that is basically the, the about all about the LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn sorry LinkedIn profile that's the the, the uh, first one and the action point from here what I would like to ask you if you can uh, you can just click the picture of this upload your professional headshot so make sure that you have actually professional headshot uh, on your profile revise your headline be I would I would recommend you to be customer centric um, design your LinkedIn banner and look about uh, to, to your about summary and write it in the first person and then add all those all those aspects which I, I mentioned, yeah? So these are the action points from, from the first, first part. So now I would like to ask you a question. Do you want to engage with the key decision makers? And I think the, <laughs> the answer is clearly yes, right? So let us talk about how to engage on LinkedIn. <clears throat> and there is a certain strategy, LinkedIn engagement strategy. And I'm going to talk about this, uh, this strategy uh, again, one by one. So it's a four-step formula, how to engage with the right, right target audience on the LinkedIn. And I'm talking about engagement prior to connecting. Yeah. So engagement prior to connecting. First, what we're going to do, we're going to search for our target audience. So we know who is our target audience. We search for the target audience. Maybe we can write, uh, you know, one to five different different names of our target audience, and we start searching for those people on LinkedIn. Okay. Number two, we're gonna visit the profile of those people, and that's a very very important step actually, from. Two different reasons. Why? One reason is because if we visit profile of somebody, the other person will get prompted that we actually visited the profile. So we actually showing that we are interested in that in that person, right? So he gets prompted, he will see that we visited the profile. And the second thing, which is also important, is that we're going to gather the intelligence about the person, sort of intelligence. I don't mean stalked somebody, not at all. 
but just uh, see where you know what are his interests or what are her interests where she went to school what uh, what groups uh, on linkedin groups she is part of you know all different kind of uh, information which we can use as a you know conversation starters you know and those those things are really really important so when you're looking through the profile just make sure make note of these things you know what is actually uh, the person all about uh, you want to know that then what we're going to do we're going to engage with the post of that particular person um and why is it again so important is because whenever we start engaging with the post or uh, leaving some comments again it is the very we are very very visible to that person imagine just from uh, on on for a short time just put yourself in the opposite opposite um, position you just posted some some article on uh, on the linkedin and nobody is really responding and then suddenly somebody makes a meaningful comment how do you feel about this how do you feel about about that experience you suddenly see oh that somebody is making really meaningful comment let me see who is this person so i will probably go and check the profile and i will see if you know and then you know that that's the beginning of the of the report that's the beginning of the relationship which we are building so that's why it's extremely important that we actually engage with the post of our target audience and we make meaningful comments and if i mean if i'm talking about meaningful comments i really talking about how that post make you feel or you know adding some value to this not just awesome or fantastic or uh, great great sharing or something like this not these you know one word or two word shout outs yeah really make a meaningful comment i know it takes time it it's it's kind of like a tedious maybe for for some of you but make sure that if you're building this relationship this relationship is built on on really a solid state on on a solid base yeah so this is really important to 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 think about so engaging with the post is extremely important and what we can do to actually enhance that engagement is follow the person so you know that on the linkedin you don't need to necessarily you know, necessarily connect with person first because connection means that that that's both sides um you know, it's a two way journey but with follow you can just follow somebody yeah and again if you follow somebody he will get prompted so he will see that or she will see that you actually following her yeah so again showing the interest in that target audience is extremely important and the engagement you know if you take if you make this engagement uh, strategy part of your routine of a weekly routine you will see immense uh, results getting from from this and we will we will build up build up on this just in a, in a minute please 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 resist any type of selling please resist type any type of selling you know how how awful it is when you connect with somebody on linkedin and the first thing would you would you get in your email box is uh, you know a, a sales pitch or somebody's pushing some product or service to you how do you do you like it i don't and i don't think nobody really does yeah so really make sure that you not selling anything through um, you know especially not on the first first go and still we are talking about you know that we want to create that strong rapport strong relationship building on the engagement if you want to up your game with the engagement you can also join some uh, industry relevant linkedin groups it's very very in interesting and important you can also uh, like and comment on not just on the post but also on the articles of of that of that particular uh, person and you can engage with your profile viewers because you can see who actually viewed your profile who is commenting on your on your post as well so do not leave those people just just go maybe they are interested in you for some reason so if you want to engage with them start the engagement just make sure that you checking that uh, these things out i as always say engage before connecting engage before connecting it is so important that you start with the engagement first don't jump on the connection first start with engagement then the connecting will become much 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 easier why because many times when we do this engagement right people who we trying to engage with they are interested in us they coming back to us and they are actually asking us for connection yeah so that's the big victory you don't need to ask for connection actually they are interested in us because we are we are showing that interest um uh, of them so that's that's really really important <clears throat> 
If you want to see how you actually doing on the LinkedIn, LinkedIn is uh, giving us some, some number which uh, they call social selling index. If you want to, uh, if you want to check, I mean, don't be preoccupied with the numbers. Yeah, uh, obviously, you can you can check it out. Um, it's just giving you the overview. How are your activities on LinkedIn? So if you go to that uh, to that link, which I'm which I'm putting there, LinkedIn dot com slash sales slash SSI, you can check. You know what is your social selling index? And once you start doing activities, which I'm talking about here today. You will see that the number will be will be uh, increasing as well. Uh, yeah. Anyway, don't be preoccupied with with the number. I'm just I'm just putting it out there uh, just for you to know. So action point from engagement uh, uh, section: identify certain number of people, maybe five people you want to connect with, and start with engagement first. Yeah. Second, visit their profile and gather the intelligence, as I mentioned. Engage with their posts and articles leave some meaningful comments and do this at least for one week. It is really important. Yeah. Um, if you want to, if you want to know a little bit more about LinkedIn and strategies and all that, I actually run a LinkedIn smart podcast. So, um, it's just, it's just for you out there. If you can, uh, you can, you can, uh, um, scan the QR code, you can get to, to LinkedIn smart podcast. Very, very interesting. Every Monday, some new, uh, new podcast or on the, all your uh, favorite platforms. But do you want to connect with the ideal clients? Again, I think the answer is definite yes, right? So let's get into how to connect with my ideal clients on LinkedIn. So of course, there is a certain strategy behind this. And we started already with engagement. Yeah, I mentioned that first you engage, then you connect. <clears throat> um, and first uh, thing is, Connect with people you know. Um, <laughs> whenever I mention this, always the audience goes, well, yeah, of course. Well, we know, right? But I can tell you how many times I work with clients, with our clients on one-to-one -one sessions uh, or in, in master classes and all that. And then when I when I do this exercise, many people, they, re they realize that actually they haven't connected with the people they know. So imagine you have somebody who you worked with um, some of your client you work with and the client was happy with the, with your um, services or products and you work with them two, three, four, five years ago. So go through the email box, check your email box and connect with those people on, on LinkedIn. Why is it important? Because out of 10 to 15 people you connect, minimum of one or two will reply back with this. I meant to connect with you. I meant to actually uh, connect with you because I need your uh, your services. I want to in uh, you know I want to do a business with you again. Many many times it's a low hanging fruit. So please guys, if you if you think about it, really do this exercise. Go back through your email box and check it out. It is really extremely important. So connect with people you know. Yeah. So that's that's important. Of course, connect with people you want to know. So again, be very specific. Um, have the target audience in mind and start, you know, uh, connecting with people you want to know, your target audience. Don't just connect with left, right and center. You will receive a lot of connection requests from people you don't know, you, you have no relationship with. You know, why would you invite them in? I always ask my audience if somebody, uh, if somebody getting in touch with me or connecting with me, asking me to connect with, uh, with him or her, I always like, I once want to know why is it, why is it so, is, is it, is it really, um, is it really going to add some value to my my target audience? Um, that's that's a question we should always ask. So we should be really very strategic of who we inviting into our uh, contact list. If you want to connect with person, if you want to connect with somebody, please always add a personalized note. Don't just click connect and leave it like this. Add a personalized note. Make sure that you say. I um, I read your post the other day and it really resonated with me. La la la, something like this. Or I like your post because something. Can I connect with you? Or would it would it be okay to connect? Uh, you know, on LinkedIn. Would you be okay with that? Add this personalized note. It makes it very very different. You know, you showing some interest. You you do an extra extra work, little bit extra. Just makes it you know from the conversion perspective, people are actually accepting. Uh, connection request with personalized note on much higher percentage than just connection request without. Yeah. So make sure that you always add a personalized note. 
If you want to find some warm prospects, see, as I mentioned already, who commented on your post. Don't leave these people just uh, just to be always uh, always reply whoever po or commented on your post always reply and make sure that you see that those people are actually in some way or another maybe your maybe they can be your clients they are their prospects right see who visited your profile it depends of course uh, if you if you're free or, or premium LinkedIn user. Because like um, premium LinkedIn users, we have, uh, you know, 90 days of a history. So we can see, you know, as a, as a free user, you probably cannot see that much. I think you can see only two to three days. But even that, like, just make sure that you're checking it out and you see who is visiting your profile. Because those people, they are interested in you. They, they landed on your profile for some reason. So don't, don't leave them. Just, uh, um, you know, just be kind of uh, check them out. Action point from this, this part is... You can identify your specific target audience, um, you know, one, two, three groups. Um, you can send a connection request to at least five people a day with the always add a personalized note. And obviously, if you want to connect with me and um, I'll be more than more than happy, again, you can scan the QR code and it will get you directly to, to my LinkedIn, uh, LinkedIn profile. But uh, make sure that, you know, if you want to connect with people, just make sure always identify your specific target audience. That's the engagement level. And if you're con connecting with people, always add a personalized note. Those are important parts from the connection. So now, do you want to be recognized as an expert on, uh, on LinkedIn? And again, I believe, you know, that's why you're here. Yes. So let's talk about the visibility on LinkedIn and how, um, what and when to post on LinkedIn. Why to post, what to post, when to post. Those are the main questions which we're going to address right now. So when we're talking about why, when we're talking about the objective, why to post on LinkedIn, we always need to think about starting a conversation. So we want to start conversation. Many, many times I talk to my clients and they always say, oh, you know, we're posting, we're posting on LinkedIn. But actually, nobody's nobody's engaging with our posts. You know, no, nobody, nobody replies and, you know, we feel like it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and when I look at the post, there's nothing, nothing to to reply to. There's there's no conversation. You know, they they're not actually creating conversations. So if you're not creating conversation, you cannot expect that people will reply back, right? So make sure that you actually, um, when you post, when you're posting on LinkedIn, why to post? Create a conversation. You also want to share. You want to share some value, right? So you want to add value. You don't want to just post for the sake of posting. You always want to add value. So make sure that you are your posts are adding value. Also, you, through the posting, you want to build trust, right? So uh, people trust you. People trust your expertise. You know, of course, and talking about expertise, you want to demonstrate that expertise, right? Through the posting. So you want to be seen as an expert on, on LinkedIn. And of course, through all this, you want to also develop certain relationships with, with people. So perhaps, and I will tell you how, how, to, how to tag people also on the post. And then uh, generate new business. So those are all the reasons why we are actually posting on, on LinkedIn and what we need to keep in mind when posting on, on LinkedIn. What to post on LinkedIn, that's a different story. So you can start with the text. Maybe it's a short text. Um, me personally, I like always every single day. I'm starting my day with the meditation and uh, and some some quiet moment. And I, I like to to uh, reciprocate that in my in my LinkedIn feed. So if you follow me on LinkedIn, you will see that every morning there is some inspiration quote on my on my LinkedIn. Very short, very short post. Nothing really major, but actually that that how I like I like to start my day. So I kind of like I feel I'm projecting that into my LinkedIn feed as well. So you can start with the text. You can also add some photo. Obviously, the photo, the visual content is more engaging. People, people are attracted to, to photo content, or visual content. So you can think about that. I am big believer in the videos. Realize like a, if you're not creating videos, then you're missing a big part. You know, nowadays we all have these little things, right? Like next to us all the time. You don't need anything else. You know, if you see my videos on LinkedIn, you will see that, um, you know, social media videos, I do them all the time on this. Even though I uh, we have a video marketing agency here, I don't use team, you know, or, or our, ex, um, you know, expensive equipment for that. I use actually my phone to create the videos. The videos are really extremely important on the LinkedIn. And please, if you, uh, if you do a videos, upload them natively. 
What I mean by this, upload them directly to LinkedIn. So don't take a link from YouTube, for example, from some other sites and, and, and um, share the link in, um, in LinkedIn. Always upload the video natively. Each social media platform, they like their native content. You know, they don't want you to leave somewhere else. So if you share the link from YouTube video, you click on the link, it will take you to YouTube, right, from LinkedIn. LinkedIn doesn't like that. Yeah, so, so they, will, they will actually decrease that organic reach of that particular post. So just be mindful of, of this and make sure that if, you incre if you're creating videos, upload them always natively. So it's very, very important. Very, very interesting, interesting um, post is polls. Actually, LinkedIn uh, reintroduced polls just about two, three months ago. It's, it's quite new. But uh, imagine... If you really are, if you're really researching some something, and if you really want to um, get some some answers from your from your audience, polls are fantastic, fantastic tools. You know, so you can you can actually you can actually research. You know what your audience wants, so you can ask some some really important uh, questions for your business. I think it's uh, using polls is really smart thing to do. You can also write articles, which are basically the blog post on on LinkedIn. Those are the long form uh, long form text. And um, last but not the least are presentations. Presentations are actually interesting as well from different uh, perspective because LinkedIn algorithm is now assessing the dwell time on your, uh, on your post. And presentation, because it's usually 10 to 15 slides, you know, so the dwell time on the, on the presentation, if it's interesting, obviously, so people stay there and then scroll through, right? So the dwell time is longer on a, on the presentation. So that's why it's, um, it is interesting to actually do uh, to create this uh, this post as a presentation. Um, if you still don't know what to what to uh, do the post about, maybe I can give you some few inspirations. So make uh, think about what is what is inspiring, what is what inspires you. So you can write a post about that. Also, you can write a post about questions from your clients, frequently asked questions. You know, on on the website we have this FAQs, right? Again, just think about what your clients are asking about and create a content about this. Maybe you can interview a client. You can have an interview with your client. Nowadays, it's very easy, right? Like you can, you can have a Zoom conversation. You record that and then you can, you can have that as a, as a post. You can highlight your customers or your product or, or products of the customers. So give a shout out to, to your customers and to your clients. How great is that? You know, ego boosting post. You can also outline certain common mistakes. I don't mean shaming or blaming anybody, not, not like that. But there are some common mistakes people making while, for example, uh, I don't know, uh, um, you know, before, before they buy our product, they make some, there, there are some common mistakes. Yeah? If, you, if you feel like you can predict some future trends, if you, if you want to, you can have, um, you know, some book review, review of some of your favorite podcast. You can comment some industry news and add some value to it or react to other posts from some other other people, I think that's uh, that's a lot of lot of uh, other other things. So if you don't know what to post about, just dip into into this, and um, you can uh, you can definitely find some inspiration. If you still don't know, there are some great websites which you can go to and you can search for some content ideas. As for example, this one answerthepublic.com, very very interesting interesting page. Or if you can go to Quora as well, that's that's another one. Um, when to post on the LinkedIn, that's another very, very important question. Um, I prefer and I always recommend to our clients to post at least, at least three times a week. Um, why is it so important is because if you're posting, imagine you're posting once a month, you're basically invisible. You're not visible to your, to your target audience once in a month. Once in a week, ah, ah, still, you know, if you're posting once in a week, push yourself and, and post three times in a week. I'm pretty sure you have a lot to share, a lot of very interesting and important things, yeah? So post at least three times a week. That's uh, that's one uh, one of the uh, things. And post work during the working hours. That's usually like the sweet spot of uh, when to post. It is also interesting when you start posting, just make sure and and uh, um, sort, of, sort of like analyze the post, you know? So, so make note, when did you post, you know, what day and all these kind of things. So then, you know, you have the data and you see, you know, when the people are reacting to your post. Perhaps it will be night hours. I'm, I'm, I don't know. Um, so just you need to you need to figure it out and you need to see. That's the reason also why you need to post more. Because if you post that just once in a month, you don't have any data. You don't know really 
<laughs> you know, what are people uh, reacting to, right? So be, be mindful of this and try to, um, try to post during, during the working hours and at least three times a week. You can also tag relevant people. Those are, those are other, other advanced tactics on, on LinkedIn. So whenever you, for example, you give a shout out to your client, of course, you tag uh, um, the client in the post. That's, uh, that's a really interesting, interesting thing. And um, also you should add some hashtags. Please, please, please. LinkedIn is not an Instagram or Twitter. So you do, you not need to, you do not need to use like a 15 hashtags. No, LinkedIn is actually recognizing three, maximum three hashtags. Actually, some of people say five because LinkedIn is not really exactly clear about, about the number, but definitely, you know, I'm using three hashtags. It's more than enough and um, use the hashtag as a indexing your content. So create your specific hashtag. Why is it important? Because then you have all your content, you know, under one, one hashtag, which is very specific to you. So whenever you're sending your client to, to your content, you can always say, oh, follow my hashtag. This is my hashtag. And my hashtag might be, be LinkedIn, or actually my hashtag is LinkedIn smart, hashtag LinkedIn smart, yeah? So make sure that, uh, that uh, you're creating this, this hashtag, then you can use some, some other more popular hashtag as a business, marketing, whatever it is, and maybe some, some uh, location specific hashtag like a Dubai, Abu Dhabi, uh, UAE, whatever it is, yeah? So we were talking about, about all these things and now let's talk about how to, how to convert. Um, now you know how to search for your ideal clients, how to engage with them, how to connect with them, and uh, how to communicate with them, start communication, start building relationship and move the clients offline uh, through your inbox to a deeper and meaningful business conversation through email. So the question is LinkedIn for me has, I'm, I'm pretty sure now quite definite yes answer, right? Um, why is it so? LinkedIn is a great platform to create more visibility for us and more visibility bringing us more credibility, yeah? And if people trusting us more, they see that we, you know, we are sharing valuable content, we are expert uh, uh, for them, then we are going to generate more leads. We are going to see that people are actually asking us uh, for the business, uh, business relationship. So this is really important, important thing to do. As a business owners, we always, always ask, you know, okay, what is the ROI? You know, how can I can I actually calculate the ROI of, um, of my activity on LinkedIn? And yes, actually we can. And I will, I will show you this example. Imagine that out of all those activities which I covered today, you have 100 new uh, contacts. Out of these 100 new contacts in a month, only 35% of those will be your target audience. Yeah, Very, very conservative number. Out of this 35%, only 20% will actually go and buy service from you. If the lifetime value of your client is 15,000 dirhams. Do you know how much money is the, or what is the ROI of this activity? 105,000 dirhams. I think it's not bad, right? Um, <clears throat> and I don't want to, you, you to leave this, this money on the table. And why do I know that this works? Because, you know, we have, we have done it with, with other clients um, and we've done it numerous times. And we have these testimonials, which, you know, clients coming back to us and saying, you know, I've got, I've got five new deals in, in three months. And it was actually those, uh, this one particular client has done it really during the COVID period. $60,000 worth of business just in five new deals because of, um, in, you know, doing these, these activities. Um, Another client, uh, they, were, they were generating about one to two leads per month and they started to, to introduce the engagement and, uh, and connecting and all that. And suddenly he's getting 10 highly qualified leads uh, in the first month. I think it's not, uh, not bad. Um, if you want to know more, obviously you can always, always follow me. As I, as I mentioned, you can go to our, to our website. Uh, and um, I know that it's, it might be very, very tedious uh, to to do certain things and maybe you feel and I can I can see that some some of the people they're saying oh I need to clone myself um, because there's so many things to uh, to do I understand sometimes it might be overwhelming or feel like it but that's why we're here that's why we we are helping uh, our clients our, our our customers with you know the right um, right strategy on uh, on the LinkedIn and we actually have have a, a LinkedIn Smart Masterclass where we actually going through and revamping the LinkedIn profile of our, of our clients 
we also showing how to engage with the ideal clients with very, very uh, powerful exercises, very simple but powerful exercises. We also show you how to, how to connect with ideal clients with 80% success rate and uh, co-create with you, for example, even the content, content calendar so you know what you're going to be posting in the next month. And of course, we're going to provide you with templates and ready-made uh, scripts for, for, your, for your LinkedIn, LinkedIn success. So uh, as a bonus, we are giving some LinkedIn Smart Workbook, which uh, um, uh, includes some, some tips and, and useful links. So if you're interested in this, it's to our hands-on advanced session. Um, as, as you can see through this presentation, I hope um, it, it was clear that, you know, I'm really not about any fluff. I, I don't really like, I like really hands-on things, you know, very focused things, which really bringing some, some results. Um, so we have, it's a, it's a group session, group masterclass, where we allow only a maximum of 25 people. And it's all about life, life coaching, life interaction, life Q&A. So if you're interested in that, we are actually um, offering this um, now. We normally, we run in-person in -person classes, but now, of course, everything's going online. So that's why we could actually reduce the price and this is um, uh, what we are offering it, if offering it now. So if you're interested, you know, feel free. Um, I think LinkedIn, I hope you understand that LinkedIn is really very, very powerful platform. For, for me, uh, I really feel that, you know, without the LinkedIn, um, I would be like without my legs because I could not, could not uh, carry on with my, with my business. I'm driving a lot of, lot of uh, um, business leads. Uh, more than 80% of my business is actually coming from LinkedIn. And we are doing exactly the same for our clients. We are showing them how to drive business from LinkedIn and how to become successful on LinkedIn. Because LinkedIn is really one of the most powerful uh, platform where you can generate business leads. You can really be very, very um, smart. You can be very focused and uh, you can get a lot of, lot of good uh, success on LinkedIn. So that's pretty much uh, that's um, uh, I wanted to I wanted to wrap up this session with a um, big thank you to all the uh, all the participants. Uh, thank you very much. If you want to connect with me again, feel free and uh, I will hand over back to to Mohammed now uh, for for the Q&A. Thank you, Vitek. That was very informative. Um, again, as I mentioned, please engage with us with your questions uh, using the chat section here. And uh, please mark your question with a Q sign uh, in order to, uh, easier, to be easier for us to uh, find. Um, okay, so, so basically, I think we have a question, and, and that was uh, um, uh, from uh, one of uh, the participants today. Uh, he's asking, what about the business to business? Like, if you would like to apply the same thing, but on the on the company accounts, not on uh, not an individual account. So, is there any variation or any differences? Yeah, there are some some differences. Obviously, today we were talking all about our personal profile, how to basically build a personal brand on on LinkedIn. Uh, business pages are slightly different, um, uh, but you can apply certain things on on the business pages as well. So, obviously, when you try to connect with people on uh, on the business pages, also you need to share certain certain things, certain company updates, and um, you can be very uh, relevant on a, on a company company page as well. So you, some of the snippets, some of the bits and pieces which we were talking about today, you can apply on on a business page. But if I would dip into business page, it will be all different different webinar. It will be another webinar of one hour talking about only about business pages and how to actually be strategic about business pages because they are slightly slightly different. But I think some of some of the things you can definitely use from the uh, from here, and then maybe cross promote. You know, um, whatever you post on on your on your business page, you can actually cross promote it on your personal page. Um, that that's that's also a smart thing to do. Um, another question: What advice would you give an undergraduate student on developing his LinkedIn profile to attract possible employers or entrepreneurship partners? Again, imagine about the engagement, you know, I, I'm going back to the engagement, which is really very, very powerful thing. You know, you need to be visible to that, to that company. Uh, and if you, if you have some company in mind you want to work for, then obviously you start, you know, working, start some working the engagement with that part of the people in the company, maybe the HR, HR department, maybe the CEO, you start to being visible, start engage with them because once you are visible to them, they will definitely go and check your profile. And perhaps that will be the first, um, 
you know, like a touch point where we can start communicating with certain people and talking to them. You know what? Like, I really want to help you with in your company because. And again, the because is it's extremely important word because uh, you give the reason why why you want to work with them, why you want to to be part of the company. Yeah, it's not just I want to be part of your company. Full stop. No, I want to be part of your company because and. Um, you know, while starting with the engagement, I think it's uh, it's uh, it's very very um, um, very apparent that you're interested in that in that particular company, and you can you can then start the conversation and move it move it uh, uh, you know to the next stage. Okay, perfect. Um, how we can connect with Amazon sales leads like FBA with LinkedIn? Amazon sales leads with uh, with LinkedIn. Um, uh, honestly speaking, those those are like advanced strategies. Um, when when you want to when you want to create and connect your certain CRM with your with your LinkedIn, you would probably need to use a sales navigator. You would need to actually pay for um, and it's it's not even the sales navigator. The first the, the basic level you would need to to use Teams or Enterprise. Um, honestly speaking, those are those are very very different strategies. Um, which I am, I'm not gonna not gonna talk about talk about now. But yes, of course, you can you can use a CRM and you can connect the CRM of your particular company if it's uh, if it's a Salesforce or, or some some other with your with your sales navigator. But those are really like a more advanced strategies for this. Yeah. Awesome. Um, is it worth paying for LinkedIn Premium? Yeah, very good question. You know, many, many times, always I get I get this question because I, I should include it in my presentation. Um, but uh, yeah, so so I always answer the same same way. Um, start with a free LinkedIn account. It's it's really a extremely powerful tool. Um, so you can actually start with a with a free only when you start hitting certain limits. When you see, for example, I can't search for more clients, or I can't, I cannot, I cannot do this, I cannot do that. Then you understand that probably I need to upgrade my account, and only then you start paying for it. Actually, don't go the opposite way around. I see many times clients, um, you know, they're paying for account, they're paying for LinkedIn, and they're saying, you know what, like it just. Like it feels like I'm I'm just paying and I'm not getting anything. So don't do that. Don't don't make this mistake. Actually, do it the opposite way. Start with the free account. Then when you start hitting the limits, you see ah okay. I know now how I'm using LinkedIn. I need to move out, move up to to the next level. Then I can think about you know how what kind of what kind of premium will be for me. Yeah, okay. So it, it should be gradual uh, yes. way of <laughs> of uh, going to that premium account. Um, another question is, um, what about sales navigator? Um, um, it is expensive. I think it's a question and a statement in the same time. Well, yeah, again, uh, so, so basically the same question, it ties the question or the answer which I gave to the free and, and, uh, and paid version. Yeah. So when you start seeing that your LinkedIn, your free LinkedIn is not really accommodating all your requests which you have and you want to move to the higher, then you can start thinking about Sales Navigator, for example. I'm a big believer in Sales Navigator and I really love Sales Navigator because it allows me to save searches, to, to, to to search for leads, to search for accounts, you know, seeing, you know, kind of, kind of like I'm following them, following them around, um, giving me some dashboards which I which I need for uh, for my daily daily search for for the people. So from that perspective, it is it is really great tool. Um, yeah, it's it's um, it's a pricey. I think I think that the, it's like a seventy seventy nine eighty dollars per month. Uh, so, so again, start with the with free. Then, when you when you start hitting the limits, then you think about, and then maybe maybe you can think of of actually paying for the sales navigator. Right. Um, uh, if I'm offering multiple services, is it a good idea to create multiple profiles? No, it's not about uh, it's not about services. Uh, um, uh, we are talking about your personal profile. So, your personal profile should. Uh, kind of like a gift picture, and I understand that you know sometimes we're sitting on a different chair, so like we have we have a different different uh, sort of a verticals in our businesses, and that's fine. You can actually outline this in your about section where you can say or or in your edu uh, sorry in your experience maybe like, uh, like uh, what what do you do. That's that's okay. That's fine. So uh, that's the place where you can where you can do it, or you can create a business pages. For for a different different verticals, that's okay as well. But don't mix really your personal profile with your with your business page. This is not really a business page. Your this is your personal profile. So treat it as as your personal profile. That's that's it. Okay. 
I think the question is coming because uh, we the focus here is the business to business and uh, and the business side of things. And uh, as an SME, what is the right way of uh, of using the LinkedIn? So I think the question is coming. Can and the business page can can they use different services or a, each service has to be a different vertical? That's that's the question is coming. From. So so again, um, you know, we're talking we're talking here about about the the personal personal profile and in a personal profile, if you're managing director of a company and your company has a certain verticals and then uh, or, or maybe you have a you have a or you're a serial entrepreneur, for example, and you have a different kind of businesses that will be projected in your business page. Not uh, your profile will just say that you have your you know owner of different type of businesses. That's fine. That's OK. Maybe you have one uh, particular particular business which you're more fond of. Maybe you want to want to promote that, um, you know, in certain certain time. Maybe for for the year, I will be just focusing on that. So do your headline can state that as a, as a first one of the focus business. You know, something like this. I understand that sometimes, you know, when we run three, four, five businesses, then it's a little bit confusing. You know, what we what we should do and how we should actually, um, you know, put it in in our personal profile. But then I wouldn't really mix this with with the business pages. I would actually create the business pages for for my business and uh, you know have people connected with those business businesses uh, with, with business pages. Yeah. Um. There is another question say great tips, but how does a small retail business connect with individual retail customers on luxury products like jewelries, uh, not B2B, but B2C? Yeah, um, I get this question as well many, many times. Um, and I need to say that uh, LinkedIn is really more for B2B, um, still like a B2C. I don't. I don't see it really that that we're working that well for B2C uh, B2C type of businesses. So. If you want to, if you want to reach out to distributors or you know resellers and all that, that might that might work. But uh, as a B two C, I'm not really sure if if that is a that is a absolutely the best platform where where you should be. Maybe you can think of um, of a you know Google AdWords, maybe Facebook ads, um, and and the, the other platforms because they are the, the you know the customers, the clients uh, um, right there. So yeah, I would just answer that. Um, how to increase the number of followers uh, in a professional page? On the business page, uh, yeah, you have you have actually on the business page you have um, the limit of hundred, so you, so you can reach out to hundred hundred people every single month. Actually, when they when they um, when you send them the request and when they uh, say yes, you actually get back that um, uh, that number. So so you can actually reach out to to more people. Um, so that's that's basically that's basically one way, and obviously sharing the content. Um, some again sharing a valuable content. Imagine uh, I'm, I'm talking here about really, you know, whenever you, you you're posting posting some kind of content, and it's no matter if it's if it's on your personal page or on your business uh, business profile or your personal profile and business page, uh, make sure that your content is really creating some value, giving some extra tip, um, you know. You know, just just adding a value to life of other people. You know, if it's just a PR of your of your company, um, I don't know. Like, if people are not really interested in that. We we you know we are shower, we are showered with all these kind of um, you know things from left, right, and center all the time, and we are not really responding to that. We're responding to something which brings value, which gives us some some type of um, um, you know extra thing. So imagine I'm sharing a tips like a, today I shared with you some tips and you find it valuable, right? So you will go to those pages, you will check it out, and probably you will think about me once, you know, even this is over. And then when you think about LinkedIn and say, oh, this this that was the guy who was was giving this webinar and he was actually very helpful. He was giving us, you know, like a, that's the connection we want to we want to be remembered for, not the, not the ones that you know. We are pushing some some of our product on uh, on our clients, and and they don't want it, and they kind of like rejecting it. So just be mindful, be mindful of this. And when you're sharing this through your business page, obviously people will react and respond to it in in a better better manner. Um, I think this is a question. Um, I, I think we answered uh, before, but we can repeat again. Can we create a LinkedIn account for business company? Uh, yes, that's a, that's a different, different thing. Just don't use your personal profile. I, I see it also many times, you know, some people, they just don't, they create a personal profile and instead of name, they put the name of a company and instead of the profile photo, they actually put the logo. Uh, so they kind of like I do this. Um, 
I'm I'm not really I'm not really sure if it works. I I, I don't like to connect with on, on a personal level. I do, I'd like to connect with you. So if I want to connect, you know, with uh, with a company, I don't like to connect with a company. I wouldn't like to connect with another business owner or or you know on that even even it's B B two B, but still it's a it's a person to person, right? So I want to see who is who is uh, behind the account, not just uh, the name of a company and, and logo. I, I usually I usually don't uh, don't connect with those. Yeah, there is uh, one of the participants. He would like to join your company. I don't know your company or my company, so I don't know. <laughs> so uh, you should be specific. Um, okay. Another question is saying for business page, how to increase engagement? I think you covered that, but I think we need more elaboration on that. Yeah. So again, you have you have a credits. You have a hundred credits per month. So you can always reach out to people, um, you know, through your business page, and you can send basically hundred um, requests to join to join or to follow your business page. If people accept that, you will get that credit back. So you can actually reach out to more more people like this. Um, Again, do not use it in a spammy way. Um, you want to give the value, and I, I keep talking about the value and you know how how the content should be really relevant to to those to those people. Because if it's not relevant, if you if you reach out to me and trying to sell me, for example, I don't know industrial AC, I'm not the person who does anything like that. And I got I mean I got like a quite few messages actually just recently. You know somebody is trying you know to sending me a company profile with the with the industrial AC. I went like. You know, I'm, I'm just read my profile and see who am I that if I'm the right client for you. And if you figure out that, you know, I, I run video production company and you understand that probably I don't need the industrial AC. Right. So so I'm not the right, right, right audience. So I'm not, uh, you know, so you're not sending the relevant message to relevant people. And this is the problem. You know, that's why sometimes the selling is so hard because, you know, people are trying to sell you know, products to wrong type of audience, you know, so we need to figure out who is the target audience. And then, you know, um, that that's my, my, much easier because we are talking with the same language to the people who are actually responding to what we what we want to tell them. Yeah. yeah. So that's the, the way how to how to actually reach out to more audience through our business pages. And you mentioned you mentioned that actually perfectly in your presentation. This is uh, engagement before connection or yep. before connecting. And, and this is this is uh, the, this is the key. This is the secret. So, uh, and you need to understand the purpose of of this account on on LinkedIn or or this person on LinkedIn. Why they are in LinkedIn, and then you can engage after that. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's it's really like a secret formula which which works like charm. Um, you know, when you engage before connecting, that the connecting is, is much easier. And actually, many times it happens that you know the people you want to connect with, they actually send you a connection request. Yeah. Um, is there uh, advertising LinkedIn uh, like Instagram? Yes, of course. LinkedIn has a, a, a adverts. Um, there is a there is. A, I mentioned uh, I mentioned that uh, we do this um, the LinkedIn Smart Podcast. One of the episode is with uh, with the top class uh, guy from um, uh, who actually runs uh, LinkedIn ads. And he's really a worldwide expert on, on LinkedIn ads. His name is AJ Wilcox. So, so if you if you want to listen to him, what he's saying about about this, I'm not an expert in LinkedIn ads to be honest, uh, but I know that what he mentioned that basically for smaller type of businesses who have a budget less than five thousand US dollars per month for for the uh, for the advert on LinkedIn, it doesn't really make sense to advertise on LinkedIn because LinkedIn adverts are usually uh, a little bit more expensive on the expensive side. So if you want to advertise um, and you're smaller, smaller on a smaller scale, then usually you should go for, for as you mentioned, uh, Instagram or Facebook. That's that's a good. But um, yeah, uh, only if, if your budget is higher than five thousand dollars a month, then then you can you can think of a LinkedIn ads. We will try to definitely answer all the questions. Uh, um, however, there is definitely a time limit, but um, we're gonna have like maybe three more questions, and, uh, and then we can wrap up. Um, there is a question about: Can I convert personal LinkedIn account to a business page? Uh, well. You can create a business page and you can have a personal account. I mean, there, there are two different things. Uh, I don't know what you mean by by creating, you know, turning personal page into a business profile. Like a, you can create a business profile and and you can have a you can have yeah. a personal page as well. So it has to be separate. Your personal yeah. from your business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. okay. 
what is the frequency in engaging uh, in the LinkedIn profile? What is the what is the frequency of what? Sorry, I didn't. didn't get frequency in engaging in the LinkedIn profile. I mean, I mean the weekly. I think you mentioned something about three times per week. Well, that's that's about posting uh, within. Oh, yeah, I, I think I think I understand what uh, what it means. Like, uh, how often we should we should post on somebody else's, or how should how often we should engage with? Well, it depends how uh, you know. I, w I would do it within. Like I mentioned that um, I, we normally recommend to our clients to do the engagement engagement level, uh, engagement strategy for at least one week or ten days. It also depends, of course, how often that person. Who we are targeting is um, he's posting. So if that person is posting like just uh, I don't know twice uh, twice a week, you can't really comment more on his <laughs> the post, right? Like because he's not posting more. But still, you can you can uh, you can post, you can follow, you can then you know um, you can see see what what he does. You can follow, you, you can see the the visit the profile. So there are certain touch points. So within the ten days, I would say you need to create at least three to four touch points with that particular person. Yeah, that would be that would be the frequency. Okay, um, there is a question here uh, uh, saying, what is the silver lining in keeping the post consistent? <laughs> uh, value, value, value. I think that's uh, that's really something which is extremely important. Many times we think that the most important thing is to talk about our product, but actually it's not. It's not talking about our product. It should be talking about benefits. It should be definitely talking what what is in it. Like imagine what is in it for me. Why did you join this workshop or this webinar? Why did you why did you want to listen to me? Because you wanted to draw some benefit for yourself, right? So if I'm if I if I'll be start from the beginning and I'm talking to you about you know what I do in my company and then what I do with my LinkedIn and like you will after a while you will think like get like a, this is nothing in it for me like it's, it's, it's you know no information for me he's talking about himself you know what he does what you know and we don't want to listen to those kind of people right so imagine if you are like that if you if you just just putting out there articles about oh this is our product this is our service this is this this is that we are here on the market on 15 years we are you know we are doing this we are doing that people are listening after a while they they're not interested who you are people are interested what you can do for them and this is really a very very important i think message which we need to understand we need to speak that that kind of language our marketing our marketing collaterals are, are all, all this needs to actually reflect, you know, what our or what, what our client wants, not what we want to tell them. What our client wants, because only then we talk in the relevant relevant language, and they understand. You know, this is the benefits. This is what what is in it for you uh, in this in this webinar. So I think this is really important to always keep that in mind, bringing value, creating value for our people. Yeah. Uh, we still receive more questions. So, what do you think? <laughs> I'm okay as long as as long as people. I can still see that you know people are engaged. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm fine. That's okay. That's fine. Okay. There is um, a question about how to create a catchable content for the LinkedIn LinkedIn profile. Yeah. So so I like I like this question and uh, I I thinking about about this all the time. I really like to start usually the post uh, or some kind of post with a question. So um, you know how I, I the other day I was I was I was reading some article and um, uh, it was it was all about you know what are the the most kind of like a sticky headlines and it was um, it started with how to um, and if you imagine if you think about it really like how to is is really a, a way how you engage with the people so how to create you know or uh, how to how to build a house for example. If you if you're in the building houses, you would definitely read that post, right? Or uh, you know how to create I mean, I, I don't know um, how to create a, a video in ten minutes. Again, if you want to create video, this is really a, a title which will and you know very very which will be very relevant to you. So I think I think starting with a question with intriguing question is really good. How to um, draw attention to my to my post so i like to start start always post with uh, with some kind of intriguing questions that's that will be my answer good um i think this is going to be the last question uh, here uh, um the participants asking is uh, i'm using sales navigator uh, uh -huh. what are the tips of converting saved leads 
uh, rather than basic introduction and, and pitch, what are your tips uh, or suggestions for improving engagement and conversion? Yeah. So, so if you're using Sales Navigator, Sales Navigator is giving you a lot of different different things. So, so you can actually you can see um, what your your leads, what they are doing. Perhaps uh, they were mentioned in some some post. Um, they posted something. So those are all the icebreakers. Those are all the conversation starters. So you, you as a Sales Navigator, you have an in mails. So uh, for all of you who don't know, basically in mails are are uh, messages you, you can you can even send to the people who are not con directly connected with you so you can actually use those and you can tell them you can tell your your client for example oh you know i've seen your post and it was really fantastic again you know start you know talk about them you know make the connection about them um if you if you want to if you want to uh, create a relationship with somebody you cannot start talking about yourself right like imagine it's it's like um, you know, if you go to networking event, for example, and then you you bump into somebody, and I, I bump into you, Mohammed, and I'll start talking about myself. You know, how great am I, and you know what yeah. I'm doing. After after a few minutes, you will be fed up with me. You know, you don't want to talk to me, right? But if I if I'm be asking you, you know, so what do you do? You know, oh, how long have you been here? You know, what do you do? What is your business? You know, what are your challenges? Things like that. Suddenly, you you feel like, my God, I mean, this guy is really great. Like uh, he's listening to me. He wants. He's kind of interested in me. You know, suddenly that relationship is completely the dynamic. Dynamics of the relationship is very different, right? Mm -hmm. So I think it's really important to, to always keep in mind that when we start start engaging with somebody, it always should be about them. It should be about about our customers, about our clients, and uh, and I think and that, uh, this, the sales navigator is giving us a lot of icebreakers, a lot of conversation starters um, where we can start from. So that's uh, that will be my my question. Oh, sorry, my answer. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, thank you, Vitek. That was very informative. And my key takeaway for today is uh, engaging before connecting. Uh, <laughs> this is a, a great thing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to practice uh, definitely myself. Um, okay, so um, I would like now to uh, actually to, uh, to, if you'd like to know actually more details about the uh, ADI business banking uh, services and solution, um, please visit our website, ADIB ee slash business or call us on the dedicated contact center number zero two six five seven eight triple seven um finally i would like to thank all participants for joining us today and for making this webinar very interactive with relevant questions looking forward uh, to see you at our next event thank you and have a good day thank you bye thank you bye bye